Good morning, everyone. I um, yeah, I just want to pray that you would really quieten your minds from the past week and really focus in on the worship for this morning. Um, yeah, we're starting with a song called Here For You. It might be new for a lot of you, but it's just a song to open your hearts up to God and let him in. So enjoy this worship. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to our Easter morning service brought to you by the churches in and around Lossiemouth. It is wonderful that you have come to join us this morning. Welcome. We turn to God together. Let us pray. God, we come together looking for you. Whenever we find this, wherever we are, we come together looking for you. Whoever we are, however we feel, we come together looking for you. We come in uncertain times, fearful and hopeful. We come with loss, grieving and wounded. We come with joy, trusting and excited. We come together and we are looking for you, God. 
and you are here. There is in Jesus calling our name. The living Lord loving and forgiving us. There is in Jesus breathing your spirit of peace into us. God, we come just as we are. May we hear you call our name and may we find your peace and love with the risen Jesus. Alleluia. Amen. alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are stilled when striving cease Comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love. In righteousness, scored by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am His, and He is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me, from life's first cry. To final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hands till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I stand. No power of hell. No scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hands Till he returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ I'll stand
Well, good morning, and uh, it's wonderful to be able to come and uh, share a little bit in this joint service that we have together. Uh, my name's Rab Donald. I'm, one of, I'm the pastor at uh, Lossy Mouth Baptist Church and, and one of the pastors who's taken part in this service. So for those that I haven't yet met, even some in my own congregation, uh, thank you for uh, being in this joint service together. I wanted just to take a moment to uh, think about Easter. And one of the things that, that I think is fascinating at the moment is that we've just been through a year of our first you know, it was our first Easter where we were in lockdown. It was our first lockdown, our first experience of uh, queuing in a supermarket just to buy uh, our goods that we normally buy when anyone and any amount of people can go into Tesco and Asda and uh, wherever else. It's been a strange time. But over this uh, past couple of weeks, we've become more of an anniversary people. This is actually, you know, the first anniversary of living in lockdown. This is now our second Easter when we've been through a time of challenging uh, experiences of not being able to do things for a whole year, including some really crucial things to us, like not being able to sing at Easter has been a really difficult thing, and we're kind of coming to that anniversary of that problem, of that lockdown, of that restriction. But with it has come a different feeling, a different sense for us, because this Easter is feeling very different as we know we're beginning to see restrictions loosened, as we have that wonderful reality of a roadmap out of lockdown as we're moving forward. And in that way, we come to this Easter with an excitement, almost a promise in our hearts that next Easter isn't going to be the same as this one. But as I reflect on the experience we've had, and it would be ridiculous for us to go through this time and not to reflect on COVID and think it through, there's a few things that I think COVID has taught us that really helps us understand the meaning and the power of Easter. The first thing is that for many of us, and in many situations, COVID has brought out the best in us. No better example of any particular person can be given than Captain Tom Moore. Captain Tom Moore has raised almost 33 million pounds doing laps in his garden. And although he's now uh, passed away over this year, he's done an amazing job of bringing hope into our situation and of really rallying the nation together in a time when we were all kind of looking for opportunities of hope and looking for ways uh, to encourage one another. Another thing I think that, that really has brought out the best in us was when we needed trials for the vaccine. Do you know we got over 100,000 people volunteering to trial the vaccine in order to make sure it was safe and available for everyone else? That is a record number of people who've put themselves forward, so many so that they had to pick their most, the ones they wanted the most out of the tests because not everyone could take part because they didn't need that many people to participate in the tests for the vaccine. And finally, you know, in our own local community and around, we've seen amazing amounts of support when the community council in partnership with some of the churches has been able to provide food for some of the most vulnerable in our society. Little things, maybe something you've done for your neighbor, looking out for your neighbor, maybe little things you've done in your community as well. COVID has brought out the best in many of us. And yet, COVID has also brought out the worst in us, hasn't it? You know, I was thinking about that very beginning of the lockdown. It was obviously a year now since people were panic buying. Do you remember what it was like when supermarkets were saying, listen, if you're not selfish and you just buy what you need to buy and your, your uh, sugar and your eggs and your pasta and your toilet roll, then everything will be fine. But if you panic buy, there won't be enough for everyone else. And what did we do? What did we do with that one bit of information and that one opportunity? You're right, we panic buyed. We went out and we bought so much pasta that even Italy seemed to run out of pasta. We bought so much toilet roll that no one seemed to be able to get some toilet roll for weeks at one point. It was absolutely crazy. And it was a real sign to us that when things come to push, come to shove, things become challenging, we always put ourselves first. 
As long as I'm okay, I don't really care about the others and who's behind me in that queue waiting for their need for, for basics of uh, bread and, and pasta and eggs and whatever else. Second to that is kind of a global issue. You know, we've revealed really our own selfishness in the way that the vaccine has been made available. In reality, the richest countries are getting the vaccine first. And although some money has been put aside for other countries, the way it's going at the moment, it's looking like it might be 22, 2023 before the poorest countries are actually vaccinated. When push comes to shove, we want our lives back to normal, even if it means other people have to wait longer. That part of our human nature that says, actually, once I'm okay, then I'll worry about the other really reveals the worst side of humanity. But also, and finally in COVID, there's been transformation. We're so excited that we're able to meet in churches of 50 again, and, and really with a sense of hope that that's only going to get better and better and better as we go forward. Suddenly, the vaccine has changed the way that we see everything. The numbers of people who are infected, the number of people who, who, are, who are in hospital has been massively reduced since the vaccine has been made available. And so suddenly our lockdown has changed from this never-ending monotonous life where we're going through the same thing, we're not able to do the same things. You know, even at the very beginning, you remember you could only walk your walk once at a dog, so you can only walk once with your dog in a day and trying to work that round into your routine. You couldn't really leave the house except for essential things, and that has continued now again. But this time it's different because this time we have the hope of a vaccine that's going to change things. And so it's almost feeling like this is the last time we have to do it. So it's just that second win when we keep running through that race, just keep going, and we know that things are going to get better. That's our anniversary look back as we look over COVID. We see the best in us, we see the worst in us, and we see the transformation that comes from a vaccine. And you know, as I reflect on that when it comes to Easter, I think it almost gives me a sense that I'm able to see Easter in a fresher and more beautiful way. Here's a little verse uh, as a church we were working through First Peter uh, a little while ago. And uh, this verse is an absolute superb verse for when it comes to Easter. In First Peter 3, verse 18. First Peter 3, verse 18. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. That's such a good verse. We're going to read it twice, okay? For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Easter has revealed the best in Christ. Christ suffered once for sins. The love of God has been shown clearly at Easter, where Christ, God the Son, has volunteered to come into the world, becoming human, just like you and just like me, in order that he could suffer once for all. As a one-time event, he suffered on the cross his death is the revelation. It's the revealing of the best of God. That he has a deep, deep love for us. A love that desires to be with us. So strong that he's even willing to take on our sin on the cross once and for all in order that we might be brought into him brought into his family, brought into his presence, accepted by him. Easter has revealed the best of Christ. But Easter has also revealed the worst in us. The verse continues, the righteous for the unrighteous. Easter is that stark reality that we are not simply just good people. We like to think ourselves as of good, and we often are good when we compare ourselves to other people around us, particularly in things that we're good at. You know, if we've got a particularly close family, we look at others who don't care for their family, and we say, well, at least I'm not like that person. 
If we're particularly good at our job, we look at others and think, well, at least you know, I'm steady in my job and I've done well and I've got promotions. We're so good at seeing the not so good in others, but really we have this sense, this false sense that we're good. But along comes Christ at Easter and he says that he had to die once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous. The reality is that he wouldn't come for the righteous, for the unrighteous, unless we were the unrighteous that he had to save. This is the real reason why most people don't get the real joy of Easter. They just think of it maybe as a happy story because they can't seek help because they don't know that they're ill. Imagine if we're going around and we had no idea that we had COVID. We reject the vaccine. We don't need a vaccine. There's no such thing. And we continue on in our way until we get hit by the reality of that infection. Well, if you don't know you're unrighteous, if you don't know you're ill, you're not going to know the true joy of Easter that Christ came to be the solution, to be the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous. And as we look at the life of Christ, a life where he gathered up no wealth, he hoarded up no property, he ate with the lowest in society, He never tried to impress the leaders around him in the community. There's so many things about Jesus that are so radical. He went to the utmost of righteousness for our sake. Never mind the typical things that we think of when we think of the fact that Jesus was never cruel to anyone, when he never even thought a bad thought about somebody, when he never even said a nasty word in the most heated of moments of his life we just realize the absolute righteousness of Christ. And with it, we realize the fact that we are not righteous. We realize the unrighteousness within us. We cannot keep up with a holy God. But the good news is that if we recognize that we can't keep up with the holiness of God, then we don't need to. Because Christ has come to be the righteous for the unrighteous. And finally, Easter has transformed us by the hope of the resurrection. We've seen the best in Christ. We've seen the worst in us. And now we see the transformation that comes by the glorious reality of the resurrection. The vaccine has changed the way that we once saw COVID. We now see a way out. We see as something that that won't continue to limit our movement and ability to get on with our life is now at hand. The vaccine's created the hope of freedom. And we're starting to see its effects on our nation already. Easter is a vaccine to a much more drastic illness than COVID. Easter is the cure to death. Before sin, there was no death. When, when Adam and Eve were in the garden, when God had created the world, he created it perfectly. When it knew no sin and it knew no death, as we're told by Paul, the wages of sin is death. When sin came into the world, so did death. And so fear and fear of death has gripped us ever since because it's final, because it has this moment in history when we've not lived up to God's standards and we've got no chance of ever doing it once our life passes. But then along comes the Easter message and says that even death doesn't have a grip on us anymore. The empty tomb is the promise that death has lost its sting, that Christ has reversed the fallen world so that where once life led to death, now in Christ, death leads to life. Everything has been thrown upside down. Nothing has an answer to Jesus' words on the cross when he says, it is finished. Once for all, once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous. It is finished. And so Christ has given us the vaccine where once death was the end of life, separation from God, a life that Peter explains was unrighteous and therefore we would spend eternity separated from a holy and perfect God. I want you to notice these beautiful words again in Peter. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death, in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Notice that wonderful phrase in the middle, that he might bring us 
to God. Easter is the message that we are vaccinated from our unrighteousness and able to be brought before God, the holy and perfect God. What's so wonderful about this reality is that all the restrictions are lifted. You see, because we were unrighteous, there were restrictions put on our lives. We cannot come into the presence of God, for the holy will not mix with the unholy. The righteous will not mix with the unrighteous. And so, therefore, there was a recognition that you have been locked down out of the presence of God. You have been restricted, unable to approach God, unable to speak to Him, just unable to do anything before Him. But we're told that his love for us is so great. His love for us was so uh, so vast that he sent Jesus Christ as the vaccine to that reality. That Easter is the beautiful reality that Christ has come to lift those restrictions so that we may be brought before God the Father. Not as a a lesser person, you know, as I, I see often before, Easter messages about the fact that we don't come in through the back door. It's not that we can sneak into the presence of God, sneak into heaven where God rules. It's not even the case that we can come into God's presence as like refugees. You know, people who belong somewhere else but are kind of accepted and brought in on a kind of legal status but not quite. Easter is the message that Christ's death has made us co-heirs with Christ. We become like a brother, a full brother, accepted brother, that God the Father accepts us as his family, accepted as brothers and sisters, fully able to approach God because all restrictions have been removed through Christ on the cross so that we can call ourselves sons and daughters of the Most High. This is the wonderful joy of Easter. We see the best of God that his love is willing to go to all depths to bring us into his presence. We see the worst of humanity, that there's a problem to be solved. Christ had to come because of the unrighteousness in the world. But we also see the hope and transformation from Jesus Christ, the vaccine to our problem of sin and death, that we may not only be cured, but brought fully into the presence and family of God so that we can cry with real authority and confidence, Abba, Father, that we can call God in heaven our Father in heaven because he fully is our Father through Christ. That's the beautiful message of Easter. That's the joy that we have stirring up in our hearts as we think of the depths that God will go to to bring us into his family and the willingness he has to die on the cross in absolute love for us. That empty tomb proving that God the Father has raised his son from the dead because his authority to defeat death and sin is absolute forever and never questioned because it's once for all. The wonderful message of Easter for us. And may we dance with joy in our hearts as we come to recognize it this Easter. Let's just take a moment in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord God and loving Heavenly Father, we come this Easter to rejoice in the resurrection of our Saviour, that wondrous event that has changed everything. In a year that has been very different for us, we continue to have that one constant of knowing that we have a risen Saviour, yet we know that there are many yet to hear and respond to such good news. Lord, as we look out across the world this day, we see clearly why there is such a need for a marvellous saviour and king. This world is gripped by the power of sin, its effects evident in the lives and actions of men, women, boys and girls. And we know that the only way to be freed from sin and its grip is through placing our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for those consumed by hatred. We drive them to acts of violence that we've seen in days past. We ask that you would minister by your Spirit and through your people to the hearts and minds of those blinded by hate and fear, that you would show them a better way of peace and of life and of freedom in you. Lord, we live in a hurting and broken world, but not a world without hope. As we gather together, one in spirit, we celebrate because the first Easter brought hope to a hopeless world. 
The power of sin was broken and the devil defeated. Christ has secured the victory. As we look around at the beauty of your creation, a new life that is springing from the ground, we are again reminded of new life that is available to those that place their hope and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray this day for our world dominated by the effects of COVID and give thanks for the vaccines that have been developed in the fight against this virus. We give thanks for those that have get, been gifted with understanding and skills to make this possible and how quickly it's been possible to make these available. We pray for each family, each loved one touched by COVID and we ask that you would surround and comfort those that have suffered loss. For those separated from family, we ask that you would strengthen them we give thanks for the technology available to us to keep in touch. We look forward with hope to better days and continue to trust in your leading through this season of difficulty. We pray for each church that will faithfully proclaim the Easter message up and down our land. And we give thanks for the new and innovative ways that we are able to engage with church in these times. Lord, may we see the transforming work of the Holy Spirit in lives that are drawn to your beauty and majesty. For those that throughout this time have developed questions about life, meaning, and what we trust in, may they find the wonderful answers that can only be found in your words. And Lord, we pray for our community here in Lossiemouth and the surrounding area. May we be strengthened in the present, see blessings in the days ahead, and know the wonderful presence of the Saviour at all times. May this town find favour in your eyes and serve you in all its ways, we humbly pray. Remember those that are struggling today and we will, times when we find it difficult to rejoice, we ask that in your mercy you would meet with them as you meet with us this day, wherever they are, so that you may know the very real presence of the Saviour. Lord, all these things we humbly ask in Jesus' precious name, who gave us these words to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Do you feel the world is broken? Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? We do. Is all creation groaning? It is. Is a new creation coming? It is. Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? It is. is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave, he is David's root and the Lamb who died. Ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of a blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of this? Yes. Does the Father truly love? 
and those who have yet to enjoy it. And may you know in your mind and experience in your heart the resurrection presence of Christ through his Spirit. Amen. Amen.